New footage shows this is how Ukrainian FPV drones drop bombs destroyed Russian soldiers near Avdivka. Video that showed up online this week offer an up-close look at Ukrainian troops attaching deadly explosives to their drones before flying them off to Russian targets. The video, which also show the operators in action, highlight the continued and growing prevalence of drones on both sides of the battlefield. This past weekend, the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine shared video on Telegram Ukrainian First Person View FPV, drone unit from the 53rd Mechanized Brigade outside Russian-occupied Donetsk Oblast. In the videos, the FPV drone has been equipped with a rocket-propelled grenade RPG, warhead and is flying toward its presumed target. The footage were shared by open-source information accounts on X, formerly known as Twitter. Other footage show an FPV operator from the unit wearing goggles and preparing to control the drone, as well as a soldier attaching an explosive to another drone. The drones, which are basically cheap hobby-style racing drones, are often equipped with things like RPG warheads or plastic explosives, and the payload is sometimes hastily attached with a simple adhesive. The footage offer an interesting look at the process troops go through, from preparing the drone for flight to rigging it with its explosive payload. They also speak to the larger, constant presence of drones on the battlefield. These systems provide enhanced situational awareness through persistent surveillance as well as tools for offensive strikes. Both sides heavily employ unmanned aerial vehicles UAVs, flying cheap systems into asymmetrically high-value targets like tanks and fighting vehicles or using higher-end systems to drop bombs on unsuspecting targets. Both Ukraine and Russia have created large drone forces, and over the course of the war, operators have developed impressive skills, particularly the Ukrainians, who have used drones to chase down tanks, trucks, and even a lone soldier on a motorcycle. In some cases, Ukrainian operators have precisely flown UAVs into open tank hatches before detonating them inside the vehicle, and just as both sides of the war have relied on drones, they've also attempted to adapt to the growing threats posed by them. However, Russian troops have built crude cages on top of tanks and employed jamming on the front lines in an effort to spare vehicles a fiery fate that many others have met in battle. But nowadays, nearly as many Russians died in two months along a single miles long stretch of eastern Ukraine as died in all of Ukraine in the first couple of months of Russia's wider war on the country, but Ukraine's own casualties have been lighter. Staggering and escalating losses have not bought Russia significant advances in Ukraine since the first few weeks of the wider war, but at the same time, these losses aren't about to collapse the regime of Russian strongman Vladimir Putin. Around 13,000 Russians have been killed or wounded in two months of attacks on the Ukrainian garrison in Avdivka, a few miles north of Donetsk city in eastern Ukraine's Donbass region. The administration of U.S. President Joe Biden revealed this week in a declassified intelligence assessment. For comparison, the U.S. Defense Department estimated 20,000 Russians died and another 50,000 or 60,000 were wounded between the start of Russia's wider war in February 2022 and the commencement of a major Ukrainian counteroffensive six months later. Losses around Avdivka swelled to 315,000, Russia's total casualties after 22 months of major fighting in Ukraine. The entire Russian military, active and reserve, included 2.9 million people at the outset of the wider war and since has added another 400,000 billets. In the same nearly two-year period, Ukrainian forces suffered nearly 200,000 killed and wounded, according to U.S. estimates, but Ukraine's own armed forces had 1.1 million people in late 2021 and since have grown to 1.3 million. If the U.S. tally of Russian losses seems high, consider that Ukrainian estimates of Russian casualties are much, much higher, 
the Ukrainian government counted 340,000 Russian deaths in Ukraine between February 2022 and December 2023. Anecdotal evidence supports a profound Russian death toll. One Russian soldier fighting near Avdivka recently said his unit started their assault with 70 people and lost 56 of them. What's especially shocking about Russia's losses is what it has gained in exchange. While Russian minefields managed to limit the pace of Ukraine's 2023 counteroffensive and hold Ukrainian brigades to advances of just 10 miles or so along two main axes, Russian units have not managed to make major advances of their own in seven months. The Avdivka meat grinder is the Kremlin's most successful campaign since its forces captured the ruins of Bakhmut in May, but Russian regiments have advanced just a mile or so north and south of Avdivka for a total gain of four square miles, and they have not captured Avdivka itself. More than 3,000 Russians were killed or wounded for each square mile, most of them victims of Ukrainian artillery brigades that turned their bombardment of Russian assault columns into a competition, according to Ukrainian artillery officer Artie Green. It's clear Russian troops are dying in Ukraine in much greater numbers than Ukrainian troops are dying, and for smaller gains, but whether that disparity matters is less clear. Ukraine is a democracy and so are Ukraine's major allies. Decisions in these countries are subject to popular opinion. Russia, by contrast, is a democracy only in name. It essentially is illegal to run against Putin, and credible opponents usually end up dead or imprisoned. So Russia can draft hundreds of thousands of men, and send them possibly to die in Ukraine, without those losses undermining the war effort. But tens of thousands of Russians have died in his war of choice in Ukraine, and Russian lives have never mattered to Putin as much as Ukrainian lives.